Jim said, we, uh, we appreciate you taking the time to be in Imperial Beach, and it's a welcome relief for many of you, and uh, we are very, very excited about the new Elantra. We're proud of it, and we're excited to show you um, what that car is and what it entails. I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a Hyundai overview. Scott will take you through some of the engineering on this vehicle, and then Michael is the proud father, of this, and he's going to take you through features and pricing and content and things like that. This is our 30-year history on one page. We've been around next month, will be 30 years, and we've had some uh, ebbs and flows over that time. But really since 2008, when the world as we knew it fell apart, uh, we've had really steady growth. We basically uh, doubled our volume from slightly less than 400,000 units in 2008 to just under 800,000 units uh, this year. We just uh, set an all-time uh, anytime sales record in 2016. Uh, with uh, 761,000 and change. That was up about 5% on a year-over-year -year basis, or about 35,000 units. So a, a really good year. As you see, the curve is flattening out a little bit, and there's a reason for that. Is it's, it's we're, we're, we're uh, um, swimming against the current a little bit here. We're a, uh, we call it the tale of two cities. We've talked about it a lot before. There's a car industry, and there's a truck industry on, on the left side. The page here, you can see the car industry has been pretty flattish. On the right hand side, you can see the truck industry over the last five years has gone from about six million to ten million. So about a two thirds uh, growth in the truck industry over a five year period of time. In 2015 alone, the industry was up six percent, which is great, very strong, 17 million plus. But within that, trucks were actually up 12 percent, cars were down two percent, and that affects Hyundai because 70. 3%, 75% actually, of what we sell as cars. And, and the industry sells about 58% uh, trucks. So we are out of balance with the industry. Um, we were one of the few that gained uh, car share last year, uh, but our truck share has come down despite a 67% increase in the truck segment. Our share has actually come down because we haven't had the capacity uh, to keep up with that growth. So one of our big stories uh, this year is truck capacity, or more specifically crossover capacity. Uh, many of us were together in Minneapolis last summer where we introduced the 2016 Tucson. Tucson's uh, always has been a great vehicle for us. We've never been able to build more than 40 or 45,000 a year. We brought this out last summer. In a partial year, our sales were up 75%. More importantly, um, the shopping sites, consumer interest on the shopping sites like uh, Kelly Blue Book and Edmonds were up 123% and 119% respectively. So, great car. Uh, beautiful fit in the segments, the most booming segments in the market. And the most important thing this year, we we'll, we'll go from, we built 40,000 units in, in 2014. We built about 65,000 units last year in a parcel year. And we'll, we'll be up over 90,000 units this year. So over a two year period of time, we would have doubled our volume. And it's very, very important for us to be able to take advantage of that truck market I talked about. Another really important point, about three weeks ago, we made an announcement now we're going to bring a third vehicle line into our plant in Montgomery, Alabama, uh, Santa Fe Sport. That plant usually you know, currently has um, about 400,000 unit capacity, and we built only Elantras and Sonatas there. And we built the Santa Fe Sport at our sister plant about 90 miles down the road in, in uh, uh, West Point, Georgia. So we're going to bring tooling into um, Montgomery, Alabama. We're going to build about 50,000. Santa Fe's in Montgomery, Alabama, along with the 75,000 Santa Fe's that we're building in West Point, Georgia. So between Tucson and Santa Fe, um, we're going to be nearly 100,000 more vehicles on a year-over-year -year basis in the segments that are high margin for us and for our dealers and high growth. So very, very important um, for us to be able to continue that growth curve is getting into the segment that's actually growing right now. So for this year, um, we feel pretty bullish about where the industry is going. On the left, we're forecasting a 2% overall industry growth off of a great year last year, 17.5. And for the first time in quite a few years, we're forecasting car segment growth up 2.5%, 2.6%. Trucks will be up about 1.8%. They, they'll slow down just a little bit. But they still will represent 58% uh, of all vehicles sold. And that's pretty amazing. A couple of years ago, it was just 50-50. Now it's 58% truck, 42% car. The compact car segment is very strong. We've seen a lot of contraction in the midsize segment over the last couple of years as folks have migrated from midsize cars to compact um, crossovers. Um, the compact car segment has remained strong. It's going to be up on a year-over-year -year basis. 
It's 2.2 million strong, and it's very important for us because Elantra is our number one uh, selling vehicle. It represents about 30% of our volume. We sold more than 2.5 million of them over our 30 year history. Um, and uh, this is a very loyal segment. People usually stay, a third of the people will stay within the segment. They will not move segment to segment. And that explains why this segment has remained relatively stable, where midsize has, has, has suffered some losses. It's also a very loyal segment. It's one of the most loyal. And Elantra is number two in terms of loyalty. So our biggest volume vehicle, heavily dependent upon loyalty. And we think that really bodes well for this new car that you're going to see today. So 2016, it's hard to believe we're only three plus weeks into the year, but we've been awfully busy this year uh, so far. We started the year in Las Vegas at the uh, uh, Pepcom as part of the Consumer Electronics Show, and we introduced our virtual vehicle guide, which was received very, very well. We went from Vegas, we bounced over to the island of Maui, where we host with the title sponsor of the Hyundai Tournament of Champions, and we're very proud to have uh, Jordan Spieth as our champion who tore up the field with uh, minus 30 and just a great man. Who was the amateur partner? Ah, interesting. Sure. So a lot of the media didn't pick up that piece of it. <laughs> nor normally the pro-am draw is completely random unless you're paying for the entire tournament. If I could, <laughs> if I could follow up on that, I reported this morning's PGATour.com. It says that Jordan Spieth is quoted as saying, Z-Man is a great guy and I enjoy playing with him, but he's a total handicapped sandbag. <laughs> I had this one, it's one of these things I'm dreaming about. I'm not a very good golfer, but I had the round of my life. And he kept looking at me and said, you're, you're a 16 handicap? I don't believe it. So, it was a great day. But if the future of golf is in his hands, we're all in really good shape. Everything you read about him, he is twice as good as that. But anyway, it was a lot of fun. Um, I noticed some problems with his grip and his swing. And, and, I, and I fixed him a little bit, and I think that's how it that uh, Then we bounced from Maui to Detroit, which is why I'm sick and pretty much everybody else in our office is sick with, with a 65 degree temperature difference. And we had uh, we were awarded Ward's 10 best engines for the uh, Sonata uh, plug-in hybrid. Um, it's great to see. Um, we introduced the Genesis brand and the G90, which is a replacement um, for uh, Equus at the uh, Detroit and North American International Auto Show. We went from there to our uh, annual party at uh, Slow's. A uh, nice dive bar in Detroit that has wonderful um, um, barbecue and, and celebrity bartenders who mix heavy drinks. And then uh, we went and did our annual party the next Saturday night at, at uh, Detroit Rocks, which is the Punch Bowl Social, which is a new site for us. I think we had over 350 media people at Slows and about 450 at uh, uh, the Punch Bowl. So, um, like I said before, I think we've got the best PR team in the industry, but many people will argue that, but nobody will argue that our PR team throws better parties than anybody else. So <laughs> congratulations to them. So they went right from Vegas to Maui to Detroit to Imperial Beach, and then they're going to head to Scottsdale to the Betty Ford Clinic and buy out all that. So they'll, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. So when you lay it out like this, it looks a little bit um, overwhelming, but we really got a busy year. The blue dots are... Um, product reveals, and the gray dots are our media introductions, and we've really got uh, uh, six um, uh, media introductions and four product reveals. We've actually got five product reveals because one doesn't show on here. We started with the G9 at the Detroit Auto Show. Um, we've got, we're here today obviously for, for Elantra. We go from here to the Chicago Auto Show where we're going to introduce uh, the refreshed Santa Fe and Santa Fe Sport. Uh, we go from there to the Detroit or to the uh, New York Auto Show, where we got two things going on. We've got yet another concept vehicle, and to show how how deathly serious and committed we are uh, to the luxury market. And we're also going to introduce our first ever uh, dedicated platform um, electric vehicle. It's a Prius fighter, if you will. It's got a, a plug-in variant. It's got a battery electric variant, and it's got a hybrid variant. And, and we'll be showing that in New York for the first time. This summer, we're going to have media drives for the, both the G90, the replacement for the Equus, and the G80, which is currently the artist known as the Hyundai Genesis sedan. It will become the Genesis G80. We'll have drives this summer on both of those vehicles. Uh, we go to SEMA in November for an introduction of the Elantra Sport, which is a completely different version of the car we're going to show you today. And I think Michael's actually going to give you a bit of a sneak peek on that. Um, then at the end of the year, we're going to have media drives for um, the Ionic Hybrid and the Ionic uh, plug-in. So really, really busy year. We're going to be seeing lots of you guys, and you're going to be seeing 
lots of our new new products. So we're very bullish on this year with a combination of better mix, more trucks, fewer cars, and and all new products. So um, really exciting combination for us for 2016. Um, Super Bowl is big for us. Obviously, it makes sense for us to to play a big role in Super Bowl Sunday because we are the official partner of the NFL. Um, that's been a great platform for us to get the Sunday name out there. Um, Super Bowl Sunday is a week from this Sunday, I guess, so we got the uh, uh, Broncos and the Panthers. It should be a great game, but we've actually committed um, um, four different spots um, to the Super Bowl. We've got a pregame spot, a 60-second brand spot. Uh, we've got what we call a kickoff spot. So if you think about center of the field, coin toss, break to commercial, come back for kickoff. We're the commercial between coin toss and kickoff. So you're sitting in your seats, you're not drunk yet, you're not distracted yet, <laughs> and you're gonna, see, you're gonna see our ad. And then we've got a, um, that'll be a Genesis spot, and then we've got, we're gonna introduce the Elantra. We're gonna use Super Bowl to introduce Elantra for the first time. There'll be an Elantra spot in the first quarter and an Elantra spot in the second quarter. So it, uh, the Genesis, we've got some great talent in there. I just ask you, um, we've not shown this to anybody outside of the office yet. Uh, Chris was going to go to New York and start showing this to publications in New York. Got snowed out of that, so you're the first folks that are going to see this. So just keep your phones down, your cameras down, no video or anything like that. We have not disclosed the talent yet. We start doing that on Thursday, so we just appreciate that. But it's got some good entertainment value, and, and uh, I think you'll like it. So let's roll with our 60-second. Uh,